Now tuning in to Earbud Media. Audio for everyone. Life. Yeah, you know what? I'm actually on the up and up, I think. <laughs> Damn, I'm so glad that February is like treating you well. You know, I like the Olympic start. And I think there's a good going around. for the gold. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Goodbye. Can we start an Olympics podcast? Oh, boy. I know it's like rushing it, but. We could just do a, a once every two years podcast. <laughs> I, I mean, think that'd be really good, actually. That wouldn't suck. It'd be pretty lit. Yeah, I could talk about fucking ice skating all day. You all day don't long. even... <laughs> I could go on about ice skating for always. <laughs> don't even start. <laughs> oh, my mom sent me a beautiful text message today because she was like, it's really cold and I got like got a blanket and I'm like watching TV and like I got the sick ass candle going and I'm like, wow, you're really living your life right now. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I'm either going to do like, uh, say yes to the dress marathon or like <sighs> Olympic ice skating. And I'm like, that is the best fucking night. Yeah. That'll be better than any night I ever have in my life, I think. That's a double monitor situation. Oh, that absolutely. Needs to happen. Yeah, just <laughs> we gotta get two, two monitors. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you need to Buffalo Wild Wings that shit and just like... I have a whole screen there. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Buffalo Wild Wings. Ew! Stop! <laughs> no one on this podcast eats meat. However, we somehow managed to wrangle it in Buffalo Wild Wings sponsorship. Uh, you know, just come to Into the Twilight for that good old wings content. Yeah. We'll you know? just eat the, like, the celery that comes on the side with like, the rice oh, or whatever. Oh, fuck! <laughs> I love carrots that are cut like that though you know oh yeah when they're cut hot dog style fuck <laughs> damn i still say stuff like that like no like fold it hot dog style or like hamburger oh. style <laughs> i do that for my students all the time i mean like, yeah to I be fair you are a teacher way. and you shape the minds of young people so i understand <laughs> i there's just not another way that works better like they just get it by I, saying it that way <laughs> And I understand it, so it just, you know, there's a language there that makes sense. Sure. Hi, welcome to In the Twilight, <laughs> anyway. hot dog style. <laughs> now, all right, hear me out. How would that exactly work? <laughs> I mean... Fold your phone or whatever device you're listening to in half. <laughs> it's the only way you know. to truly experience this episode in its rawest, purest form, so... See, I wasn't thinking about the device so much as I was thinking of doing it to yourself. You know, like... <laughs> Get a blanket, <laughs> That's a choice. burrito okay. yourself, yeah. make yourself nice and comfy, yeah. and live your truth. Because it is Valentine's <laughs> Day week. Hi, happy Valentine's oh, Day hey. week. And just, you know, make yourself comfy and cozy. And you know, slather yourself, yourself directly in buffalo in wing cap. sauce. <laughs> when I think of comfort, I think just like yeah. contortioning my body in, in a perfect half and slathering myself in that good, good sauce. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what I do with face masks. So, like, just do it to your <laughs> just body, a you know? Full body face mask. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? We were having a normal conversation before we turned the mics on, and suddenly, I mean, my mind is pudding. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of pudding, though? Oh, I'm no. curious. Um, fuck. I mean, vanilla, probably. Ew. How does what it feel to be ew? wrong? What do you mean, ew? That's gross. But no, pudding's awesome. What are you talking about? I don't eat pudding because I'm not <laughs> exactly two what years mean? old. Where, but exactly. I wouldn't eat vanilla pudding. Where, listen, I'm an equal pudding opportunity <laughs> consumer. So you're so bisexual. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pork no was dose alley, you know? <laughs> Why just limit yourself to one fucking pudding? I mean, that's fucking true, to be honest, but... <laughs> oh, man, the the peak, like, by slash, like, poly, like, pudding is, like, those, like, mix-ins, like, the swirls, so it's, like... Oh, my God. The ones, that's it. <laughs> like, the orange creamsicle? Yeah. Like, where it's just split... Down. Yeah, that's yeah. so real. Yep. <laughs> Hi, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> What's the podcast again? 
I don't um, remember. We talk about Brock's. And rocks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I love. <laughs> I love seeing the public response to Brock's. Welcome to the Brock Zone. You're now indoctrinated. It was some good Brock. shit. <laughs> I literally because as it happens every week, as soon as we stop recording, we're like, bye. <laughs> I forget everything that we talked about. And so when I saw the title, I was like, did we talk about Pokemon for an hour? Like what <laughs> happened last week? And so it was great seeing that response because I had literally no idea what was happening. <laughs> it was a good time. How are you doing, Cody? I'm great. Oh, well, you fucking, know, I mean, share your secrets, I guess. Damn. I f- fuck, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even come up with a joke. I was just like, I love the effects of retail. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, listen, it's been a day. It was so busy. It shouldn't be busy. It's February. Get out of my store. <laughs> just you with a broom at the door. <laughs> just like stop. Ah! <laughs> Scram! <laughs> I can't believe I had to like talk to more than one person at a time. God. Oh my god, that's so real. I'm How are you? surprised. That's actually a good answer to that question. I'm just surprised today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like by everything. I like look world. around. <laughs> I open a door and I'm just like, ah, <laughs> like everything is just like too much. <laughs> I'm doing well. I have gotten less advertisements for 50 shades on spotify this week (laughs) which is great however i'm just being accosted by it on twitter everywhere (laughs) because people are starting to go see it and that's just like too much for me sure because it's valentine's day week and it's just a lot but that's fine we have so much current events that involve 50 shades this week and it's Every week, I try to forget that that is now a part of our brand, and Fifty Shades just won't let us at this point. No. And it's so frustrating to me, but I guess since we're on the topic, we should the probably discuss it. So here's the thing, folks. Yeah. Uh, Fifty Shades Freed is out. It's not technically a part of our discussion yet, but we're just kind of low-key bringing it up just to get you all used to the fact that this Keep is a little part. teaser from the yeah. future of this podcast right just kind of getting you all used to the fact that this is going to be part of our discussion but i want to discuss this vulture article that came out this week by the one the only kyle buchanan thank you um, lord <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, all of the highest powers for this article. And I was sent this not by just one person, not by just two people, by multiple people this week. So fuck my brand, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> um, I mean. Kyle, bless their soul, went to go see this movie and wrote the article title of Fifty Shades Freed is Memento with Butt Plugs. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Digest. Yes. Um, yes. And that's our podcast, folks. That's all it's got. Fuck. It's so I don't even, like, no, I mean, you should read the article because it's great, but you don't even need to because the headline is so good. Yeah. Ugh. And also, like, the memento kind of maybe explains the guns, which I'm, we're still not entirely sure about. Yeah. But, like, wow. Like, what is happening? So many layers. One of my favorite parts of this article is is pretty early on in when Kyle says, but are the Fifty Shades films basic? As I left the press screening for this week's final installment, Fifty Shades Freed, I heard a critic dismiss the movie as such, implying that the film was so simple, so generic, that it might as well be an Olive Garden breadstick. Fuck, dude. And, like, I know nothing about any of this but like damn kyle <laughs> damn dude hey kyle fucking zag on him like, seriously <laughs> damn just like also a dig to like olive garden too which is not something i expected in a 50 shades movie review but something i'm very well appreciative of we're just like hitting on all the brands so thanks kyle we're probably <laughs> gonna have to touch on the article again once we like get sure. into the series mm-hmm. but i just want to make sure that since we're talking about current events that it is there so i do have a tangential please 
Fifty Shades Beat, because um, this rem- this headline reminded me of it. For Valentine's Day, I've been writing a piece about sex shops because hi hello i love your brand have you met me this is my whole brand and so i was talking to one that just opened up and the owner has been working in the industry for like her whole life as a distributor and all these cool things and like working with sex toys for her whole career Mm -hmm. for the most part and so i was like how has the industry evolved like how has it changed since you've been like doing it or whatever sure and she was like yeah you know anal got really big and that's mostly because of 50 shades like it's a huge surge post 50 shades like in which people are into butt plugs and into doing anal and into doing like all that sort of stuff. Huh. I was like, wow, like that makes a lot of sense, but I never would have like put those two things together and be like, wow, like this definitely like caused a surge in like people's interest in like kinky stuff. You know? Yeah. Because like while people might have been doing it in like their niches and stuff and doing it kind of under the radar, like it became like a mainstream or a more mainstream thing. And I was like, what the fuck? That's awesome. But also, Jesus Christ, Fifty Shades. But you also have so much influence. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, what are we getting ourselves into? Yeah. Speaking of which, another thing that came up on our Google Daily Digest mm. was this Hello Giggles article of five surprising facts about E.L. James, oh boy. which we're not even really going to get into because right. this isn't our thing yet. But it just came up because Stephanie Meyer's name was in it, and so that's why it became relevant. Sure. I don't want to touch on all of these yet because this will be part of our, like, brainstorming thing. Mm-hmm. The only one that I want to touch on here, just because we're talking about it a little bit. Yeah. I think you knew, because we've talked about it before, that Mm. this came from fan fiction. Right. Right. So I don't know that we talked about this, because I don't think I knew this, was that (laughs) E.L. James's fan fiction was written under an alias. Yeah. Yeah. Which I I knew that part, but I didn't know the (gasps) the alias name. Oh my God, it's so good. And it's a fucking, like, (laughs) it's it's a thing. Um, so the alias that they put on here about these surprising facts is Snow Queen's Ice Dragon, <laughs> which, wow, first of all. Very good. And then the, the fan fiction of Fifty Shades of Grey was initially titled Master of the Universe. Ooh, so, I didn't know that. Wow, is all I'm going to say about that. Damn, Master um, of the Universe. <laughs> which, like... That sounds like some sci-fi shit right there. Mm. So anyway, that's a lot. Could you do me the honor of talking about this case to article that we found this week? Honestly, I mean... I was waiting for you to ask me. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Because it's kind of beautiful. It is beautiful. It is from the National Student. Another Brock. Another... (laughs) Welcome, Brock. Welcome, Brock, brother. I know that <laughs> the person who wrote this is technically named Inez, but, mm-hmm, you know, a know. fellow Brock. <laughs> yeah, we're all Brocks here. You don't have to... Honorary guys. Brock. Right. The article is, Seven Films That Prove Kristen Stewart's Twilight Reputation is Unfair. And, honestly, a great fucking piece. It's a great article. Because I will always talk about how great I think Kristen Stewart of an actor is, like, unironically. And this is a beautiful list. There are There's missing a couple. Like, most importantly, Zathura, because... Obviously, yep. that was great. But there's a lot of other great ones like Panic Room and Ugh. Adventureland and fucking The Runaways, which like my whole gay heart yeah. is still very much about that film. And Cafe Society. Yeah, for the most part, these are some older hits. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. they're good choices nonetheless. Right. And to be fair, like, this was definitely kind of the peak of her doing, like, a lot of movies. Now, she, I guess she's kind of doing, like, movies very infrequently, like, Personal Shopper and then, like, Cafe Society, like, within a couple of years of each other. Mm-hmm. And, like, doing more, like, behind the scenes or taking your time kind of stuff. And right. And stuff. But, yeah, she's fucking great. And Some I love Some good her. shit right there. Some good. Yes. Mwah. Ugh. Like, chef's kiss. Just, just A+. plus. Wow. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, I'm so glad that we have a weekly case to corner led by Cody. It's so yeah. beautiful to me. Yes. Welcome. Welcome uh, to my home. <laughs> Come on in. Yeah, it's so good. It's just like some barefoot Contessa, like Ina Garten <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> like open the door. Just Cody like, hi, welcome to my shrine. Hi, let me get a bottle um, of wine open and we can talk about the Lord of our life, Kristen Stewart. Yeah, it's so wild. There was also this like list that was posted by another honorary Brock named Anna <laughs> Quintana that was posted on Life and Style. It was basically this tribute to Taylor Lautner, basically being like, 
I mean, he's come a long way, but since Twilight. But also, let's just reminisce on all the stuff that he's done. And also, we love him, and he's basically the best, and we want him to come back to Twilight. Yes. Because they just posted a lot of photos from Twilight era, him, aka, like, Valentine's Day, and abduction, and then just a few clips from, like, Grown Ups 2, and then, like, Scream Queens, which you didn't even know that he was in. No. Fake fan. No. What? I'm not a fan. <laughs> I've never been a but, fan. I mean, that's true, but I knew, so it's fine. <laughs> I um, never <laughs> So I just looked at this and be, was amazed that nobody asked me to write this article, <laughs> so it's fine. But it was a slow news week, other yeah. than Fifty Shades stuff, but yeah. we're not supposed to talk about what it What a yet, big so week for fine. that. <laughs> yes. So we did get a few questions this week. The first question, have we watched the Twilight short films? I didn't know these things existed. What are they? That's not true. What? You knew about the one of Alice and Jasper. Oh, I didn't. And but isn't that not the, like canonical? That's not like, not a Stephanie Meyer production. Well, they were, I mean, none of those are technically like canonical, but they were hired on by Lionsgate to like make those. Oh, I had no idea. I thought those were like people making stuff that they wanted to. Yeah. So they like, they, I don't know, they did this like audition-y thing and then they're like, if they could be canonical, they like would be. I guess. Got it. They're all, like, Twilight adjacent kind of things. But yeah, there's a whole bunch. There's ones on, like, the Volturi and all those things. So I've watched them all. They're good. Um, But, yes, my favorite is um, Alice and Jasper's. Duh. (laughs) Okay, there's this one about Buffy. We got, okay, every week, (laughs) not to shade y'all for these questions, because I love, I love your engagement. I love all your questions. Every week we get, like, 15 questions that are like, if the Cullens were characters <laughs> in blank, and I'm so bad at these questions. They're so hard. But there's two this week that we got. One, if the Cullens were characters in Buffy, and if the Cullens were characters in Freaks and Geeks, which ones would they be? Uh, I have no... I, uh. <sighs> They all seem so, I mean, Buffy, I guess, is more similar, but, like, Freaks and Geeks is, like, there's no, there's no relation. Well, I feel like, it just, I feel like we just keep going back to tropes, like. Well, yeah. I mean, they just don't even relate at all, because, I mean, would Jasper be James Franco's character? Probably. Yeah, you know what? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, and like, how would you even put Esme into the Freaks and Geeks? Because she is neither a freak nor a geek. No. She is just an angel. <laughs> she is <And> so, Esme. <laughs> right, exactly. But it's like, is Emmett probably Seth Rogen's character? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> but like, eh, you know? And like, how do you even cast Rosalie in that, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, she's probably Busy Phillips' character, but like, meh. <laughs> you know, I don't know. So anyway, here's the most important question that we got this week. I mean, I love you all, but still. Um, <laughs> which vines do we think best describe the Colin family? Now this. This, this is a motherfucking question. <laughs> this is a this is a great question. And so I appreciate this. And I was curious what your initial thoughts were on this. God, I wish I did more research. I wish I just spent um, some more time on this. But, um... I mean, Emmett is obviously my favorite one, which is the bear vine. <laughs> of him, like, screaming and crying over the bear that's actually okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I think about Rosalie as a vine, I think of her as that either she's the silent girl who's sitting in the backseat of the car with purple eyeshadow... Oh my god, yes. Or she's the one that's like a five-year-old girl who comes up and she's like smacking her mouth and she's like, hi, I want to be famous. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. I also, um, she reminded me, not I guess so much in personality, but in like appearance of that girl who was like, yeah, I can't sit down. I have hemorrhoids. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. I feel that's like it would be very shit. out of character, but I would like to see that happen. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> For some reason, and I I don't even know that this is necessarily accurate. Another one that reminds me of Emmett is the I sneezed on the beat and the beat got sicker one. I don't know why. I just feel like that's funny. Ed Weird is definitely Adam. um, Just (laughs) cuz. Or he's, I don't know why, but he's just like, he reminds me of Zach Stop. Oh my god. (laughs) Just (laughs) cuz. Oh my god, Ed Weird also reminds me of that one Bo Burnham vine that's like, is there anything better than pussy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, a really good book. 
<laughs> no, that's definitely the one. That's definitely the one. Just like evading any of Bella's wanting to have sex. She's like, hey, hear me out. What about literature? <laughs> Andy's also on the keyboard. Like, what was I even thinking? Right. Um, Carlisle is definitely the one in the dollar store where the girl's like, it's the good kush. <laughs> um, <laughs> Esme, I feel like she's the one where, um, (laughs) this is so bad. Like, it's not even good, like funny content. It's just really good. Like, this is just a really good question for me. Um, (laughs) and me. Yeah, exactly. All I can think about when I think about the one for Esme is either the girl who runs up to the little kid and she's like, daddy. And then she's like, do I look like, um, (laughs) just because it's pure and it's safe or, (laughs) the one where the guy runs up into the car and he's like they're after me they're after me and she's like who and it's like the bugs um because i feel like esme would always be like down to clown and she would definitely be that mom in there yeah um so that's why we're missing a couple because like who would alice be probably like it's wednesday my dudes or something i don't know (laughs) but it's this isn't funny content this is just a really good question for (laughs) us so us having a good time (laughs) yeah it's okay but thank you for that question that's really good so much do you think jasper is the so no head one (gasps) oh yes i'm just saying (laughs) huge fan of that crack theory yeah so anyway just you know think about it um yeah Oh my god. Now I can just think about Burnham. It's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's so Edward. It's like, it's such a problem. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, wait. We didn't I just, I want to have sex. We didn't even do <laughs> Bella, though, is the thing. Oh, well, um, right, let's do Bella. Is she the who is she vine, though? <gasps> yeah. I, I mean, so. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> think about it. That's we'll come back right, to it next enough. week. <laughs> um, would <Just> you simmer. <laughs> would you like to talk about Breaking Dawn with me? Let's do it. Okay, great. Because things are about to get real. It's going to get buck fucking wild. Buckle but, up. Please don't say butt fucking wild yet. It's I not buck. Oh. <laughs> like buck wild. Yeah. These two chapters, for some reason, there's a lot of butt sex in them, actually, and it's wild. All of a sudden, folks, Stephanie, like, totally changes her brand, and there's anal in here. <laughs> Like, explicit anal. She didn't want anyone to have sex for, like, four years, and but suddenly in the last fucking 50 pages, she just goes hog wild, and everyone is doing anal. <laughs> <laughs> You're so dumb. I just, I don't know why, it just sounded like... <laughs> we just can't talk about Fifty Shades at the beginning of the pod, because then I'm ta- thinking about <laughs> anal for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> Hi everyone, this episode's sponsored by Anthony. <laughs> no. That'd be such a good plug, if only. Please stop talking about plugs, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when we're not even transitioning to a real ad right now. Oh my god. One of these days. Uh, how dare you tell me with the prospect of an advertisement? I know, I know. I'm so sorry, everybody. I was just joking. But one of these <laughs> days, maybe by the time that we actually start... For There's no way they'd us. turn us down then, right? Like, Who knows, you know? Okay, anyway, so chapter 35 is deadline. And it starts off real creepy. Yep. Because Bella's about to go and buttfuck Jay Jenks um, <laughs> in this restaurant. And, um, but before she can do that, because, like, who's bad? Um <gasps> Edward is, <laughs> listen, hey, stop. Edward is like, hey, so I checked the odometer on the car and where are you going without me? He doesn't actually do that, but Bella's just like low-key worried about it, which like, how's your marriage? Um, yeah, how's your communication skills? Still very terrible? Still very bad, which is terrifying because he's just like, hurry back to me, my wife. Um, <laughs> I'll miss you. Come back. <laughs> I'm checking every mile that you take because I put Don't a tracker on this car. It's so creepy. This marriage Ugh. is the weirdest. She's asking herself, like, how much did he piece together that I had a secret? Absolutely. And it's like, I hate everything that's happening right now. <laughs> uh, it's the worst. Anyway, she gets to Seattle where they're having dinner. And apparently they're at this fancy enough of a restaurant that the maitre d is like gasping when she takes off her coat and has her (laughs) outfit on it's like who does that (laughs) that doesn't happen that doesn't exist there aren't employees that would just like make 
outward Openly. comments. <laughs> Just and, make noises towards someone. Yeah, you could get fired for that. Like, that doesn't... Stephanie, yeah. I mean, I know she's beautiful, but, like, stop. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And then she's in such a bad mental place that, like, while she's waiting for Jay Jinx to get there, she's like, what if I just, like, threw my body into this fireplace? <laughs> it's so it's, bad. It's so, so dark. and just It like, is. You know what? I mean, to be fair, the last two chapters she was just, like, thinking about mortality a lot. And so yeah. she was like, you know what? What's the fucking point, right? But it's like dude it's just a lot, it's uh, a lot. <laughs> so the whole experience with jay jinx ends up being fairly quick especially because they had kind of talked out everything we do get a lot of compliments and we realize that jay jinx is very scared of jasper um Fuck and that <laughs> bella's experience with jasper is very much not the norm when he has to deal with other people mm -hmm. out in the real world which like jasper honey <laughs> Baby. Please stop scaring people. No. Hey. <laughs> hey, baby. We know that you're this intimidating emo boy, but also, <laughs> like, hey, stop it. Anyway, one of the things, though, and JJ starts to, like, stutter and get more nervous than he already is around Bella, and Bella's like, can you just, like, stop it? What are you, why are you nervous right now? And we find out he's nervous because he thinks that Bella is, like, running away with this. She's, like, kidnapping <laughs> Nessie uh -huh. and Jay Jinx is like hey so I'm not sleeping at night because I think that you're gonna kidnap this child and run away <laughs> so can you just like set my conscience at ease can you just confirm <laughs> that I'm not implicit in you taking this baby <laughs> which Thank like you it's nice to know that he has a conscience, I guess. Sure, it's um, in there somewhere. Right, exactly. The line I mean, is ex is exactly at baby kidnapping. <laughs> right. That is where the line is drawn. Which, I mean, fair. <laughs> um, That's, yeah. Anyway, so she takes what she needs, pays him a lot, and heads back. So it's not like it was a long conversation like it needed to be last time. Um, thank God. Thank God, yes. <laughs> when she gets back, though, she realizes that Edward has already taken Nessie back to their house. So she starts to do more of her Ocean's Eleven type stuff. Hell yeah. Um, and this is when it starts to get, one, sneaky, but also, like, sad at the same time because she goes into Alice and Jasper's room and realizes quickly that nobody has been in here. They're very much treating it like a morning space. So she takes all of their cash, um, <laughs> which is like, first of all, it seems like, damn. But then you realize quickly that she's packing this go bag for Nessie. So she puts all the documents in there and the money in there and the letters that she's written. We find out later that she's written a letter for Jacob and Nessie and then ones for Charlie and Renee as well. But she, we don't see her writing those right now. We just see her kind of like walking through this Ocean's Eleven process of like, okay, so if they're going to escape, that means that Dimitri's dead, which means, okay, <laughs> like <laughs> things might not be too bad right now. But then she does this very interesting thing where she goes into Esme's desk and <laughs> um, it's this very interesting thing. I'm very curious about how you felt about this too, because she like takes the stationary paper and she like basically shouts out into the wind of like, okay, Alice, I I hope you're paying attention and then just writes out Rio de Janeiro on a sheet of paper and it was so wild yeah she like is doing all these like codes and stuff that she's like I hope everyone wink wink is watching me right now and knows what I'm gonna do let's go let me shout into the void <laughs> hope y'all are listening yeah it felt a lot like if she was on Big Brother she'd be like looking up into the camera and like <laughs> winking like, like hey. hope you got that secret clue <laughs> <laughs> but she's hoping, right, that they go back to Rio and investigate some of the legends there, hoping that they'll find more answers about Renesmee's future and mm. can uncover, hopefully, that she doesn't die when she, like, turns five and becomes an adult, yeah, right? You know. um, but that's about all that's in Renesmee's go bag. And she's just, like, fingers crossed that <laughs> Jake can, like, navigate the language and the <laughs> like culture down there but that's about it yeah he, she, i remember um, her being like i think he took spanish at one point <laughs> yeah like she says like it was unlikely that the lapush 
high school had Portuguese. Like, no shit, Bella. Um, yeah, but she's like, Jake had at least taken Spanish as a language <laughs> elective. <laughs> like, there's um, something. Then it's like Starwipe. And they're in the clearing where they were in Eclipse. Because there's only one clearing <laughs> in this area. That's it. Um, yep. And... So it's all deja vu now. Bella's making a big point to talk about the fact that Edward and her are not saying any goodbyes. And Stephanie even does this weird, almost like self-insert in this part, where she says to, she says, quote, to speak the word was to make it final. It would be the same as typing the words the end on the last page of a manuscript. It's like, hey, shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, excuse me? Stop. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But she's talking more about the actual setup of how this is going to work, right? So Edward wants to stay there until the snow falls so that he can get a gauge of when the Volturi are actually going to arrive. And that requires them to camp out. Which means that, and Bella kind of goes through this too, that things are just like they were last June, so seven months ago. Mm -hmm. Um, And she's kind of reflecting on what things were like in Eclipse when they had to camp out there too with her and Edward and Jake. But now, one, she's a mother. um, And two, one of the people that she thought she was in love with is now like in love with her daughter. And so a lot of things to really, you know, think about, right? (laughs) And so, but she says, quote, now everything was in perfect balance. And it's like, is it Bella? Is it? It actually seems the opposite of that. Like so far. Because you're going to (laughs) die. God damn it, Bella. Why are you doing this? And she goes right back to the whole, like, well, at least this time, if I die, Edward will also be dead, too. So it's not like I have to live without him or vice versa, because I couldn't do that again. It's like, still, we're we're doing this, still. Mm-hmm. Like, we're still just like, mm, I can't live without Edward. And my fucking self-esteem and confidence only comes from this dude right. who I fucking married and still, like, can't have a proper conversation with about my lack of self-control and self-confidence. But it's fine, whatever. It's the worst. (sighs) Yeah, so here's the thing. They get ready to pack up, right? Things are all, like, starting to get in motion, and the Volturi are about to head out, like, uh, very quick. Mm -hmm. Um, But before they do that, Bella has this, like, last goodbye scene with Renesmee, and it's, like, supposed to be super emotional. She gives the backpack with the documents and the money and everything over to Renesmee. And then (laughs) when she's doing that, Renesmee like quickly figures it out, right? Because she's an adult in a baby's body. Mm -hmm. And she's like, hey, so don't do this. (laughs) Phil's like, hey, first of all, who's who's the adult here? Anyway, so they have this whole little scene together where Renesmee's like, so we're always gonna be together, everything's chill. And then Bella does this thing where she like rewords what Renesmee says and she's like, in our hearts, we'll always be together. And it's gross and weird, but they have like this whole scene together. And like, it's cute, I guess, but also in very much a Stephanie kind of way, it's very long and drawn out, I guess. One of the things, before this all happens, they get ready to like walk out and like fight the Volturi. Bella does the super extra thing that's, like, passive and, like, petty, but I love it a lot. She puts on Aro's gift from her um, that I love so much. It's that huge, like, baseball-sized diamond that we talked about, uh... I, what was that, three years ago? <laughs> um, no, like two months ago or something. But I love that she like still has it and she puts it on. Renesme is obsessed with it, right? Because it's sparkly. Yeah. And then they head out into the clearing. Everybody's all there. Stephanie spends like 18 pages talking about all the witnesses that we're all uh, very familiar with. <laughs> Um, (laughs) and all the wolves are there, right? And then the chapter ends with Edward just, like, staring out into the clearing, waiting for the Volturi to arrive. (laughs) Dun-dun-dun. Like, (laughs) and so that's where chapter 36 starts off. And I love the way that this chapter starts off, right? Because the Volturi are so extra. Yeah. And, oh. They're like the saltiest squad. They're so extra. They're all wearing the same thing and they come out and I love them so much. In audiobook corner, they Please? have all been given the same accent or same voice, I guess. Mm. And it sounds exactly like fucking Palpatine from the Star Wars prequels. Like they no! all just sound so bad. I'm like, Ileana, please. You don't you don't have to do this. You don't have to like put on a character voice for all of these vampire boys, please. No, that's so bad. Ileana, baby, no. 
You don't have um, to. It's gonna be okay. So there's like five pages of mm-hmm. Stephanie describing how all of these people come out, right? She describes it as they all walk in synchronicity. It's like the opening of a fan or something. And it's like super graceful or whatever. They're all dressed the same way. It's very like musical entrance, right? My favorite thing about all of this though, and there's like 32 of them, right? So it does look pretty imposing. <laughs> but my favorite thing about all this is <laughs> when it's happening, Garrett's like, the red coats are coming. The red coats are coming. Um, oh, God. Because he's like, extra and i adore so, him so anyway i just love this part right because it's it's all happening like they're fast right but they're all walking really slow for the drama <laughs> like <laughs> and so <laughs> why not yeah you know? right and so all you have to imagine right is these two groups of undead people just walking slowly in this clearing and it's like why are you you're just doing this for funsy it's like you could just start ripping each other apart but you're not going to just want to do this fucking talking bullshit exactly give me some punches right so but of course they're not going to do that because they're trying to be civil or whatever (sighs) uh so let's talk about the law and what i know (laughs) (laughs) so that's what edward tries to do right he gets all like pissy because he's like, Mer, they actually did come here to try and acquire us. And it's like, no shit, Edward. <laughs> like, Yeah, duh. they were going to come eventually, did you think? <laughs> Bella looks around. She sees all the werewolves that are there, and there's more than usual. And then all of a sudden, like, that was her trigger for getting super pissed, like mm. Hulk out pissed. <sighs> not anything else, not her child being in danger. No. That was the thing where she was like, there's going to be children dying. Mm-hmm. I'm pissed (laughs) like it was so weird but that was the thing i guess and so there's more description she sees all of the volturi stephanie goes into huge detail about all of the guard that's there and they're all like oh no we're so outnumbered once edward kind of assesses the situation he allows carlisle the time to be like if you're ever gonna try and be diplomatic about this, now would be a good time to, like, try and chat with them, I think. Mm -hmm. And so Carlisle, being Daddy Malfoy that he is, being the precious person that he is, he puts his arms out, white flags it, and just walks out and tries to chat with them. And it's pure, but it is very much a, like, you all could just fight right now, but you're trying to be civil. And it's weird. <laughs> uh, it's very pointless. So they're all like, the Volturi are like, Meh, it's an immortal child. And Carlisle's like, I mean, obviously you can hear someone's heartbeat. So like, let's be honest about all of this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love Caius being super dramatic because he's like, this is artifice. Meh, 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 which is great. So there's obviously a miscommunication happening here, which leads Caius to force Arena back. Because, oh yeah, Arena's there. Spoiler. Um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, they want to make sure that she's there because they knew the Denali's would be there. So Arena comes out. She'd been, like, disassociating the whole time because her family was there, and she was like, eh, I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> I'm actually okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just going to not do that. So they, Caius is like, So look at the child and look at me and then look back at the child and then look back at me. Is that the person you saw? She's like, uh, I don't know. You know, it's, she's bigger, I think. Uh. And Caius is not happy with that answer. So he, Mick freaking loses it. Yep. And Aro, of course, then takes Arena's hand and is like, I'm just going to take your memories instead and try and figure this out. I'm going to do this the roundabout way since you won't cooperate. (laughs) Exactly. He tries to figure it out, sees that there's some sort of breach of communication here, that that's not an immortal child, but he can't quite figure out what's happening. So instead, he doesn't really want Carlisle's version of the truth. He wants someone closer to the truth, Mm -hmm. which means fuck Carlisle. He wants Edward. Shocker to no one. Nope. Because, yikes. So anyway, Esme loses it. Because she's like, hey, um, not cool. You can't just have, like, all my boys. That's not good. So anyway, this happens. Jane gets, like, smug about it. And she's like, meh, 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 meh. We're going to win all this. It's great. And Bella sees that. So she's like, fuck you. 
fuck everybody. (laughs) Now I'm like super pissed. There's so many like descriptions about her shield for the next like 10 pages. And it's very like, there's lots of like explosion and blew out and like (laughs) recoil and like raw force. And it's very much, it's a lot to read. Yeah. But anyway, so she doesn't have any problems expressing herself with her shield. Now, as Edward just like tropes is across the clearing over to Aro. Um, <laughs> but he goes over and like tries to act like it's some grand honor to see Aro, <laughs> which I imagine was super difficult for him being his dramatic self but they have this like long drawn out conversation i think we got a question about this last week like the two-way feedback between the two of them and like who breaks down first right (laughs) and that's like exactly what happens here so anyway like the volturi side starts to get uneasy and freaked out and then the colon side starts to get uneasy and starts to freak out and eventually edward and aro like break off their like circle jerk fest and they're like, sure. oh, yeah, okay, we need to, like, stop. So Aro sees the truth, right? And he's like, okay, okay, yeah, like, I believe you or whatever. That seems legit, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but he wants to meet Nessie, right? Like, he, mm-hmm. that's very in character. He wouldn't go away without wanting to actually meet the child. But since he believes Edward, Caius is pissed. <laughs> um Because he wants to smash and break things and, (laughs) like, break people. And so he's not getting his way, which is not good. Eventually, they decide on a compromise because Aro is going to get his way regardless. So Aro takes Felix and Dimitri and walks into the middle. And then Edward stays there. And Bella and Renesme and Emmett and Jacob walk into the middle as well to have Aro meet Nessie and then the funniest shit happens here between Felix and Bella and I'm so curious what your thoughts are on this part because Uh, it got good for like two seconds and then it still broke bad but like it was still good for a second of just Felix and Bella like having this like macho show off for a second she's like you don't even know what I'm capable of dude (laughs) yeah (laughs) back off yeah I just love the fact that Felix is like immortality looks good on you it just sucks that we're about to kill you in a second and she (laughs) Bella's like oh yeah that totally sucks huh and then she like cracks her knuckles and like (laughs) breaks the ground (laughs) it was so funny yeah I love that so anyway Aro's like yeah I mean Felix is totally right Bella you do look really good as a vampire it was almost like you were born for that and then they all like scream and laugh and like jerk themselves off like it's so gross um like it's it's just nasty like that's not a funny joke but bella like and her emotional labor has to laugh anyway but anyway aro and renesme meet and renesme has to actually like say words out loud which she hates doing but it stops quickly in that she just eventually just like leans over and touches aro's face (laughs) Which, I mean, (laughs) like, she's like, let's just cut to the chase here. But then something very interesting happens after she communicates with him, right? She asks him just one word. And she says, please. And it's quickly communicated that she asked him to not kill her parents and, like, her family. And Aro says, of course, I have no desire to harm your loved ones, precious Renesme." And then everybody on the colon side is like, liar <laughs> like <laughs> stop lying because <laughs> like edward freaks out and then maggie one of the irish coven vampires like also freaks out and is like we all know you're lying aro like please stop anyway so since jacob is there aro has been like kind of very interested in all the werewolves and he does this like low-key kind of racist thing yeah. where he's like he they don't really mention it for a second right. it's edward that has to bring it up of like no you can't just like use these animals as your guard dogs stop but it's kind of important to bring that up yeah because that's weird and gross yeah he like keeps saying the word like loyal over and over again <laughs> and that's like very important coded language to bring up right so yes 
But then this whole conversation with the Volturi isn't really over. He's just very interested in what's going on because the chapter ends with Aro wanting to go back to his group and discuss things. But the chapter ends with him saying, quote, so much to decide. If you and your furry protector will excuse me, my dear Collins, I must confer with my brothers. So like <sighs> Stephanie said furry. <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, it, so things are starting to get intense, which is wild. Let's fucking go, my dude. Yeah. So this I mean, out. Let's fight. <laughs> I know. Seriously. So yeah, next week. Is chapter 37, Contrivances, and chapter 38, Power, Great. which is wild. Yeah. We did get someone who sent us some screenshots this week um, who recommended the podcast to one of their friends. Hell so yeah. thank you to Scott Apathy who sent us those on Tumblr. So thank yeah. you. That's very cool. We have some patrons to thank my dear cody fuck yeah we do would you like to start us off Shouts out to rachel black you the best Shouts out to jessica stanley you're a fantastic valentine oh uh i didn't i didn't know we we're doing themes we're um, not uh, we're not i just i just wanted to tell jessica that they're awesome see now i feel like you're one-upping me no 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 <laughs> <laughs> no um anyway katie weber i like Love you more than anything. Anyway, wow. whatever. <laughs> Damn. They're, all of you are perfect and amazing, and we appreciate yes. you wholeheartedly. Yeah. Okay, so I have a fan fiction for you this week yeah. that was emailed to us by the one and only Taylor Brown, Thank which God. is an author name if I've ever heard one. Oh, yeah. And this was, the title of this is Dear Thing. It was written by Nastia Cullen. Wonderful. And it was published on Christmas Eve 2008. Wow. Yes. The summary of this is Edward Keeps a Diary, Year is 2020. (laughs) And that's it. That's all it says. Great. So this is from Chapter 1, June 15th, 2020. Dear Thing. I do not dare say, dear diary. Oh, who am I kidding? This is a diary. It even says diary with Bella's neat printing on the cover. Let me just tell you, I am definitely not the kind of guy, well, vampire, who writes in a diary. I'm doing this for Bella. It would hurt her feelings if I did not write in here. She is watching me from across the room right now. What do people write in these things in anyway? What is the point? I remember Bella saying something about letting your feelings out or getting to know yourself better. Don't get me wrong, I love Bella dearly, but her idea of me writing in a diary is just absurd. But still, I love Bella. I would do anything for her. And anything includes writing in a diary. So here I am, me, Edward Anthony Mason Cullen, writing in a diary. Only for Bella's sake, of course. Nobody in my family will ever find out about this little diary thing. I would be the laughing stock for centuries. A guy, vampire, who does not write in diaries, Edward Cullen. End scene. Damn. Dear thing. (laughs) Dear thing. (laughs) Get out of here. Seriously. Uh, Well, as we say in Forks. Get bit this Valentine's Day. Beep, beep. This is an Earbud Media production. You can follow the network on Twitter at Earbud Media. You can also follow this show at Into the Twilight almost everywhere, or check out our Tumblr at intothetwilight.show. Our wonderful artwork is done by Maddie Padilla, who you can find at your Ghost Host 44 on Instagram. Our music is done by Eli Krause, who you can find at krausefilms.com. The intro and outro is done by KB underscore underscore Smith on Twitter. You can follow Allie at Into Wild Places, and you can follow me at Dyke Discourse. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye! You've been listening to Earbud Media Production. Earbud Media. Audio for everyone. Hey, Dan. Hey, what's up, John? I just wanted to...
uh, confirm that we were recording Monday. Yes. Uh, what are we recording for? Oh, it's our new podcast. Our podcast, the the, the strange little people. One, strange right? little people, yeah. Yeah, the one on Earbud Media Productions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. You can listen to it. The one that we update every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, dude. When we have new guests all the time. Sometimes. Sometimes. Most of the time. Yeah, and we talk about current events and stuff. People should listen to it, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's something cool. I think people would like it. Um, I mean, you don't have to, but I, mean, I hope you would. Did you put out the ad yet? The uh, flyers? Yeah, I, I'm doing it right now, as we speak. No, you're sitting down. You're no, not... no, this, this is happening right now as we speak. John, why did my hand just go through you? Oh my god. John. We'll talk about it next week.